All right. Well, I have a, I know I have at least two new folks here this uh, uh, today. So it's a good, as good a time as any, but I've been working on this because to tell you the truth, this, uh, this, this whole heart to heart um, uh, meditation session on Zoom and the heart to heart community that has formed, it took me by surprise. It still takes me by surprise. I'm surprised every Sunday and uh, the power of it. And I've been working in this field for a long time. And uh, I'm happy to say I had many really powerful experiences working with people going to intense and in, intensive retreats, running sessions and whatever. But this group has changed my life. And it, especially for, you know, a, a few people who are here for the first time, I, I want to give you a sense of what really heart to heart means. What's really the essence of this uh, uh, 90 minutes we're about to spend or whatever you can afford. Sometimes you can't stay the whole 90. But this really, uh, the session, uh, heart to heart was designed for, for adults for pilgrims, people who are serious about developing an adult spiritual practice. That's first of all. One, one uh, marketing guy who came to me one time, uh, he came to a retreat and he said, well, what's your core demographic? Well, <laughs> I just laughed and I, I said, well, uh, anybody who's suffering, you know? <laughs> but, uh, but really, I think the core demographic here are people who want, they're serious, they long to develop some kind of adult spiritual practice. We all grew up on, with, well, maybe with nothing, but most of us had some kind of uh, religion or some kind of basis which is good uh but oftentimes it wasn't enough to carry into adulthood and so first of all that seems to be the core demographic i call them pilgrims who are longing to develop an adult spiritual practice now to actually break down this this the the, the essence of this in our 90 minute meeting we integrate three forms of meditation, three forms of contemplation. We begin by listening with the ear of the heart to the teaching, which I'm doing now, listening with the ear of the heart. Uh, you know, we had the beautiful picture was donated by, a, uh, uh, donated by a, a guy from Cincinnati who pops in every once in a while. That uh, the picture of uh, really Our Lady of the Lake or and she's, it's, you notice she's touching the heart with her right hand, that exposed heart that's so prominent in contemplative Christianity. She's touching the inner world with her right heart, and then her, her left hand uh, is out to the world. And so when you have an adult spirituality, uh, it goes in first, but then eventually goes out into the world. It's a, it's a total package. And you can see that just by the fact that you're showing up here has gone out into the world. It's, it's helping people do important work. So that idea of, of uh, the heart, and the, the heart's a two-way vehicle. It allows you to go in to the deepest part of yourself, but then it comes out in uh, dealing and in compassion, really, compassion. So the first thing we do is we do what's called listening with the ear of the heart. And then the second part is uh, we follow that by, by what I call being the mirror of the heart in our sitting meditation, our formal practice. And you could sit any way you want in meditation. My image of uh, the uh, uh, most effective way of, of, of sitting in meditation, and I call it uh, being in the mirror of the heart. And we're gonna develop that one a little bit. But so that's the second one. We, we have the talk and we lit, we do the listening from the heart and then we're, we're sitting in the heart, okay? And then the third part, which is to me, the, it, it's the most powerful because it integrates the first two. So in the third part, after the meditation, the bell will ring and we'll, we'll segue right into another period of silence where we're both listening and being in the silence. And if the spirit moves us, we're speaking from the heart. And in that third part, 
uh, as you guys who've been here before know, we, we still go out in the silence. We, we can continue to segue right into the, another silent period. And, uh, but now the option, if, if the spirit moves you, you can unmute and um, speak from the heart to the group. Powerful. You guys who've been here even a couple of times know that, the power of that. So those are the three things, listening, being, and speaking. Uh, uh, to sum up then, and I want to use this sentence from Thomas Merton. I shared it with a, a group yesterday. But to me, it, it in a single sentence sums up what's going on here, what will be going on or what has been going on here for about 18 months. Merton, about a month before he... Uh, 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 graduated, as the monks would say, graduated to the next level of life, whatever that is, he's a graduate. Uh, he, he was giving a talk in uh, uh, Calcutta to a bunch of other monks and nuns from various traditions, uh, Hindu, Buddhist, uh, Christian. Uh, and he, he, towards the end of his talk, he said something that was very interesting. He said, the deepest level of communication is not communication, but communion. So just a lovely sentence, and it really hits the nail on the head for what we're doing here. The deepest level of communication is not communication, but communion. And uh, that really comes across in that third section, because we're integrating the listening and the being, the presence, and then just sort of as a cherry on top, uh, that's the main thing. We're in communion already. We're in communion right now, but the communion deepens in that third part. Yeah. And uh, we can speak uh, from the heart as the spirit moves us. So the normal thing is, you know, silence, 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 and then somebody unmutes and speaks from the heart, and then they mute again and go back into the silence. So it's a word in the silence and the word kind of thing. Very powerful. So that gives you a little blueprint of it and it's really taken me like 18 months to actually figure out really have a coherent picture of what's going on it's been the power just that blows me away so uh let's talk a little bit uh, i've got a poem for you that uh will be in the mail out tomorrow on monday uh but about that second thing about meditation because that's sort of at the heart of it it's like the cream filling between the two wafers really without that we just got a meeting here. We got a Zoom session here, but that the meditation is the cream filling in this Oreo here. I think, you know, same Francis held up the shamrock, but, you know, I'd hold up the Oreo because that's what we got. That's what we got. And so what about this meditation? And uh, I've, I've studied in many traditions, learned a lot from all of them. Uh, and I could recite the words or the titles of what they consider the most effective form of meditation. Every, almost all the systems build up, build you up to it. But then there's a few uh, systems that start you at the very top of the mountain. They start you with the most uh, e effective, the most, uh, the, the most powerful form of meditation in the first sense. And uh, I call that being in the mirror of the heart. So, Here's the poem, and we'll we'll just we'll just open it up a little bit, and then we'll practice it. I will invite you to practice it. You're you're always welcome to, to 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 do whatever you want, and you really all the way. Uh, being in the mirror of the heart. Saint Benedict uh, began his famous rule for monks with this line. Listen, with the ear of the heart. Centuries later. Meister Eckhart, one of the greatest Christian mystics of all, Meister Eckhart put it this way, the eye with which I see God is the same eye with which God sees me. Sisters and brothers, the one spirit cannot be heard or seen simply because it is what hears and sees. Let that sink in. The one spirit cannot be heard or seen simply because it is 
what hears and sees. So simply practice being in the mirror of the heart. The mirror of the heart grasps nothing. It resists nothing. The mirror of the heart receives, but does not keep. It loves and tastes everything without picking and choosing. If you ever want to end the holy war being waged both within and without, please start by simply practicing being in the mirror of the heart. Being in the mirror of the heart. Now, my, uh, <clears throat> my media guru, who is actually in attendance here, uh, one time I was wearing this mirror uh, and uh, she uh, counseled me. She said, don't, don't wear that mirror. She said, it, it's, it's, it, you know, picks up the light and then it, you know, distracts, it distracts people from it, you know? And so, you know, she's got an Emmy and I listened to her <laughs> besides the fact that, you know, she's right. But I, I wanted to bring out the mirror just for a little short thing, because uh, this is exactly what we're talking about. The mirror of the heart grasps at nothing. It resists nothing. That's the essence of a mirror. The, you know, you, if you walk in front of a mirror, there's your image, but it doesn't grab it and it doesn't resist it either. That's why this is a really powerful image. Neither, re, neither grasps nor resists. The mirror of the heart receives, but does not keep. It loves and tastes everything without picking and choosing. That's a very interesting uh, image that comes from early Zen writing. The great way is not difficult. Just avoid picking and choosing. Well, why is that? Well, the left brain rational mind, which is brilliant, uh, it's all about picking and choosing and it has to be, it has to be because that's part of its function. It's how we navigate to a material and spatial reality. You go left or you go right, it's important. But uh, the mirror of the heart, the heart is a deeper level, of, it's a deeper level of consciousness. And, um, you know, the mirror of the heart grasps nothing, resists nothing, because whatever you resist persists, you energize it with your own resistance or with your grabbing. And uh, so, uh, you know, to be like a mirror, you are just, you, you're there. And with whatever comes up, it's, you know, it, uh, you, you don't, uh, I do this all the time. A real juicy insight will come up. Maybe a line of a poem comes up. I'm working, I cannot get the last line of a poem. So I'm sitting here like the mirror of the heart, being the mirror of the heart. And then all of a sudden, the last line of the poem comes up or an insight comes up that I never surprise because a lot happens when you're, when you're just being the mirror of the heart. If you can just let go of control and man, manipulating reality and just rest in being the mirror of the heart, it's a very restful way to sit. Well, lots of stuff comes into that, in front of that mirror, insights, but then also anger, hatred, almost any of the emotions, especially if they've been repressed for a long time, you know, your anger has been repressed under a layer of hurt for a long time. Well, finally, you've been practicing enough that it starts to come up in the mirror. Okay, that's what I mean by the mirror of the heart receives but does not keep. It loves and tastes everything. So all of a sudden, anger comes up. Oh, no, I don't want that. I mean, I, I did this to anger for the first 30 years of my life. Lucky I'm still married. Lucky I'm still alive because, you know, that kind of repression becomes explosive. I mean, that's what, what Freud knew, that anything you cannot receive, that you cannot in a way love and taste, taste mean not literally taste, but it just means, you know, you really experience it, you taste it. That's, that's the way to ultimately metabolize these dark emotions that give us so much trouble. It's not by avoiding them. It's not, oh no, I don't go there. No, we've, we've all done that. 
and we know where it leads. So uh, the mirror of the heart receives, but does not keep it, loves and tastes everything without picking and choosing. So when you're sitting, and if you choose to sit in the mirror of the heart and just be the mirror of the heart, oh, anything can come up. <laughs> it's the most interesting video you're gonna be watching today. Because if you just really let go and just let whatever comes up, come up. Thomas Keating in, in, uh, in the Centering Prayer lineage, he, he calls this the divine therapy. Because things will come up. Things will come up. Now, can you receive them? Can you not resist them, but also not, not grab them and sort of you know, jump on a train of thought and keep going, which is my big, uh, uh, you know, temptation. Okay, we'll talk, I mean, that's just how it is. All of a sudden you're not being the mirror of the heart, you're being the ego and you're trying to get something out of what comes up, you see. That's okay, but then, all right, you come to your senses at some point. I've, I've spent the whole 20 minutes just all involved with it many times, many times, you know. The only time that I was ever present in the, was with the bell at the beginning and the bell at the end. In between, it was, it was even beyond monkey mind. It was just frantic mind trying to work some problem out in my daily life or whatever. Yeah, we've all done that, but that's not this. This is, has a power. It's just like this group. You get hit by the power. This, this is a powerful way to sit, just being the mirror of the heart, to just be a, like a mirror. You see. And then I end, if you ever want to end the holy war being waged both within you and without you, you will practice this way. Now, what is this holy war? Well, there's a big holy war going on. It's what the Muslims call the jihad. The jihad is not about, you know, attacking Russians or Americans or, you know, Sunnis or whatever. No, it's, it's actually meant, it's this. It's this kind of holy war that's going on inside. And um, if you learn this to, to be the mirror of the heart, you know, formally, and then it starts to go into, it goes as the, the, the mirror image. It goes first inside, but then it goes outside to the world, you see. And uh, you stop the war inside, then you'll just be a force for peace on the outside. Being in the mirror of the heart can, uh, can bring a peace accord. And really, we'll talk about this maybe at some other talk, because it's, you know, it's about time to sit. We're running our, our limit here. But there's, there's, there's two, um, there's like Republicans and Democrats, there's Sunni and Shia inside you. And that, there would be the big view of that would be it's, it's your ego and your soul. They're fighting all the time. And we'll, we'll maybe do a session just on that jihad, just on that. And they don't have to be. You don't have to get rid of either of them. As a matter of fact, you need to actually have a peace accord between your ego and your soul. Very few people even talk about soul anymore. Well, we do here. And so maybe in a future talk, maybe next week. By the way, I don't know where I'll be next week. <laughs> I hope I'll be uh, able to uh, connect because uh, I'm, I'm still trying to get my car from Michigan. Uh, you know, and uh, they keep pushing it back. We've had to cancel our flight and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I may be flying. I don't, I don't know what I'll be doing, but I hope to be here and I'll bring this thing with me. If, uh, maybe I'll we'll be meeting from uh, uh, Michigan or something next week. But if for some, something happens and you tune in and it just says the, the host isn't there or something, well, I just ran into some trouble or something and then I'll see you the next week. But hopefully, fingers crossed next week. All right, well, let's, let's, uh, let's segue into uh, uh, our meditation. So you might want to get into your meditation pose if it's a little different than what you're sitting, maybe a little different setup. And Jill will 